Alright, so for those of you just tuning in, we're about to spectate a 3v3 on Arabia between me and the viewers. This is, of course, a continuation between... Uh, sorry, this is a continuation of my series, Resonance Teaches Rookie Players! We're on number 8. And yes, I'm doing 200 pop, yes. Uh, basically, what I'm going to be doing throughout this game, guys, is I'm going to be spectating a bunch of my lower-rated players uh, from the Twitch stream playing a 3v3 on the map of Arabia. I'm going to be spectating this game and giving them all advice. I will, of course, be uploading the VOD later. See, we're on relatively uh, standard Arabia settings, and I'll be jumping around between the players here and giving them a little bit of advice. It will be, of course, uh, uploading this later, and you can always watch the past broadcast on Twitch. If you're listening in right now, as long as there's no lag, you can still keep listening in the background. But I recommend, though, that you pause the stream, of course, uh, because otherwise there might be a little bit of delay. I do love Pi, Terry Master. Uh, welcome back. Good to have you again, sir. All right, so if we take a look at the sieves here, it looks like the players today, or at least I can't I can't open the chat window. All right, that's sick. So anyway, we're going to start with Crystal Saber since it put me on him at the start. Crystal Saber will be playing as the Byzantines today, and he'll be teaming up with Evolve, a.k.a. Savage Genetics, and Nightbringer. Uh, Evolve will be playing as the Aztecs today. Uh, Nightbringer is the Celts. And then on the opposing team, we have the so following players. We have CJ playing as the Mayans as well. Uh, we have Alpha on the Franks, and Delta on the Mongols. Now, I am quite, uh... Oh, okay, alright, well, let's find the Black Winds. We'll play soon, though. So, anyway, um, I'm, I'm kind of sick today, uh, from my allergies, so pardon me <clears throat> if I don't talk as much as I am normally, uh, prone to do. It is the spring, of course, so it's a very rough time of the year to be alive, but nothing quite gets me out of bed, uh, than, you know, hanging out with you guys and giving you all a hand and having some fun in AoE 2. So, you know, we were all new at one point, right? So when you watch some of these players, you know, you might see this dead sheep over here decaying, and you'd be like, oh, my eyes, they're bleeding. But remember that we all uh, were like that at one point, and that's just an unfortunate uh, situation that sometimes happens. I mean, ideally, it, it makes sense that you want your uh, sheep underneath your town center so your villagers don't have to walk, right? Like, I hope this makes some degree of sense. If you're harvesting from your sheep over here, I don't think he did this intentionally. I think the villager accidentally killed the sheep. Uh, you know, his bills have to walk uh, from this point to his town center every time they pick up uh, some food. And, well, that's not that's not ideal. Uh, it, believe it or not, like, it really adds up over time. It adds up a ton. And please, yeah, best of luck with the surgery. Seriously, the Black Winds. You're in my heart right now. So, yeah, uh, generally this isn't the most efficient thing, and you want to be harvesting from underneath your town center, but I don't think Nightbringer meant to do that. Now, okay, Mitch asks a very, very good question. So he says, Yo, Resonance 22, how about the Teutons, Byzantines, uh, Britons, Koreans, and Spanish? Please discuss in terms of pro 1v1s and team games. So he asked me earlier, and I asked him to hold his question until now. Mitch wants to know why we don't see the Teutons, Byzantines, Britons, Koreans, Spanish, etc., and a bunch of other civs in, in the pro scene. And the answer is we do sometimes. Sometimes, I mean, in, in Deathmatch, you know, the Spanish can personally, uh, they, ha they have some merits. A lot of these civs do have some merits, but the thing here is that they are generally on most maps and situations, outclassed by uh, the really popular civilizations like, for example, the Huns, the Mayans, Aztecs, uh, Mongols, and Vikings tend to be incredibly popular because those civs that you listed there don't have insanely good early game uh, eco bonuses uh, like the um, you know, the Huns, Mayans, Aztecs, and Mongols, and whatnot. Like the Mongols especially, the 50% faster hunting is insane. It really gets you a huge edge, and you know, the Teutons, uh, their eco bonus, the cheaper farms, doesn't quite live up to that same uh, power level. The Byzantines, you know, free town watch isn't really going to cut it, and the fact that their units are cheaper. The civs that are really popular in pro games tend to snowball because their early game eco is so good, especially the Koreans. Their late game is insane, but, you know, the pros don't usually play maps like Michi, so the game doesn't typically drag on long enough for their insane late game to really be relevant. The faster stone mining is generally irrelevant, so that's why we don't really see them. In team games, though, they have a little bit more of a merit, like especially the Spanish with their uh, incredibly you know, good trading bonus for the team. But the Spanish, you know, building buildings faster isn't quite as good as not having to pay for houses. Uh, or the Mayans, you know, the village, their resources last 20% longer, which means that a tree that gives 100 wood gives 120 to them. Uh, you know, they have an extra villager. All those civs have pretty strong eco bonuses. So that's the general idea there. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's all about the early game eco bonuses usually, and especially on water maps. I mean, the Vikings, you literally can't beat the cheaper docks and cheaper warships. Cheaper docks for your entire team is insane! 
Oh, okay, yeah, I can refer to them as their, their color tesseracts. That's very good feedback. I always value constructive feedback uh, immensely. So when you know people like tesseracts let me know that it helps them if I refer to the players by their colors and dish to their names, uh, it helps them a lot. That's something I can totally do. See, Boar Lure coming in here from Delta, and it, what's good here is that Delta's not harvesting from the boar where it stands. He's luring it. He, he shoots the boar twice. Not once, twice, so that way it doesn't lose aggro. He's running towards his TC. Obviously, this isn't the perfect boar lure, as the boar is rather far from his town center, but it's so much more efficient than harvesting for, uh, from it. Uh, where it normally is or building a mill there it's much better to pull that board to your town center save a hundred wood save a lot of walking time for your villagers so the red player here delta usa making the right call by luring the boar now when it comes to execution of course he could have obviously had the boar a lot closer to his town center but you know nothing's perfect ideally you want it completely underneath the town center and we don't expect, you know, a lot of these guys are kind of new to the game, and it will take a lot of practice. My goal is, and this is the thing that I focus on with my channel, is to get you guys to understand the much broader, important concepts of the game, so that you understand what you're supposed to be doing. And then, you know, the execution of it will take a lot of practice. Fun fact, so Res uh, Ready Teddy says, Resonance 22, fun fact, in German, Michi's a common nickname for Michael. Interesting, interesting. Welcome to the stream, Kaido. I'm glad you could make it. You find my stream schedule below as we usually do start a little bit uh, earlier than this but i hope you enjoy your stay here welcome welcome all right so as we look as the game progresses let's talk a little bit about the map arabia here every player seems to have a general same idea of things i see that everybody here is almost all their villagers on no. food and wood that is fantastic why? Because when you think about it, do you really need to be getting gold and stone in the early Dark Age? No. What are you going to spend it on? You want to be thinking ahead all the time whenever you play uh, you know, Age of Empires 2 in general. You want to be thinking ahead. Am I going to need this stone right now? Why am I mining stone? Do I want to build a castle? The answer is probably not right now. So seeing everybody go heavily on uh, food and wood is fantastic. And yeah, that makes sense, Tesserex. No problem. I'll talk a little bit about uh, build orders in a second, uh, Overjoyed Suit, but yeah, I just want to talk about early game villager distribution. It makes sense to keep most of your villagers on food and wood in the Dark Age, especially food, because your goal is to get to the Feudal Age. You can't kill anybody in the Dark Age, right? So you want to start thinking about, uh, you know, the Feudal Age side of things, and one thing that, as well that I've noticed that's good from these guys, eh, but it could always use work, is that they're trying to keep their town center always working, and they're trying to minimize the amount of time their town center is not producing villagers. I know there is some idle time, because these guys are like three, four vills behind, uh, if they were keeping their town center working the entire time. Especially in Alpha's case, 18 pop is pretty low. Uh, if you set up your economy right in the early game, you should be able to constantly produce villagers until you have 500 food, and then just be able to click up. Uh, you don't want to be sacrificing your villager production for really anything, uh, because the goal is to get to half of the max population of the game, it's 200 pop game, right? So you want at least 100 villagers ASAP. ASAP, ASAP, ASAP. So, you know, delaying your villagers to go up to the next stage, not really ideal, and that's the most important thing you can do to improve your gameplay. What I really like is Savage Genetics here has, like, almost no idle time in his TC. So, you know, he's, he's going up to standard, uh, well, since he... Oh yeah, he's, he's the pocket, right? So he's surrounded by his teammates. So he's going for like a standard like 27, 28 uh, feudal age time. I do think that macro is more important than micro start, 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 to a degree. Uh, you need some degree of micro, but if your opponent, let's say, has a terrible economy, but they micro like a god, you're still going to be able to mess them up majorly if you have a, a really strong eco. So I think it's in general more important, but they're always, uh, they're both, they're both definitely necessary. So in this case, yes, uh, you want to keep your town center basically always working. Uh, you know, obviously you want to advance to the next age, so it should be researching techs or something like that. You know, it makes sense. And most players here have a minimal degree of idle time in their TC, which is pretty, pretty nice. Uh, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about build orders and strategies here. Hopefully this makes sense so far, because uh, that's something that uh, people wanted me to bring up. When it comes to Arabia and just team games in general, you want to be looking at your position on the map, right? And let's look at a player like, uh, you know, Delta USA uh, right now. He is the Red Mongols, and right now he's adjacent to an enemy, Christos Seba, the Green Byzantines. And in this case, since they're so close to each other, going for, you know, early game units, uh, rushing each other is actually totally a good idea. At the very least, you have to prepare for being rushed yourself. I see that Delta is mining gold, which means that he's... Either going to spend that on archers or something like that, or he's going for a fast castle age. And the blacksmith and whatnot, I, I'm assuming he is going for a fast castle age. Uh, with, with no military, is incredibly risky, because he's right next to Crystal Saber. He's putting down an archery range, and 
That is uh, muy, muy risky for Delta, as he has no barracks yet right now, because he's on the flank. But when you're in the pocket position, take a look at our, our friend Evolve over here. It makes sense that he has a... Uh, a market, a blacksmith, he's thinking about the fast castle age, because we see him mining quite a bit of gold, he doesn't have any military. Alpha here as well, hopefully he's thinking about a fast castle age, because he's far enough away from his opponents that... He's far enough from his opponents that he is in a lot less of a risk of being rushed, right? And if he goes for his own feudal age units... Uh, if he goes for his own feudal age units, like if, uh, you know, Alpha goes for archers, right? By the time that it actually reaches an opponent, it won't be very effective. He has to be thinking about faster units, and being a little greedier considering his position. Now, Delta's gold at the front is, uh, is is pretty bad, yes? Which again, makes him even more vulnerable to being rushed. If Crystal Saber makes any sort of semblance of archers or military, which he's doing right now, then Delta is completely screwed. He is completely screwed. Um, he's trying to do like a sort of makeshift ghetto wall off here, but he might be in, in deep, deep trouble as he has no defense right now against Crystal Saber, who's making some archers and he has his eco set up in a way where he'll be able to go to the Castle Age soon. When it comes to Feudal Age Warfare, uh, another thing you want to consider is that you don't want to stay in the Feudal Age forever. And one good way to ensure that you don't is by going for lots of archers, because archers, or at least transitioning into them, you don't always want to start with archers. It's okay to start with scouts, men-at-arms, maybe some skirms. It, it depends. It really depends. But you want to transition to archers if you sit in the, uh, the Feudal Age for too long, because archers don't cost food, so you'll be able to at least stockpile the food you need uh, to get to the Castle Age. You want about 800. Fog War be nice for a second? Sure. Uh, the scores aren't sorting correctly. I think they are sorting correctly, but the player uh, player colors are off. Everyone he has a, has a weird player color. So we see some attack moving in here from CJ. We'll see how this goes. So CJ here is going to be moving in, and what I like is he's scouting here with his Eagle Warrior right now. Like, this is good, uh, because he wants to locate the exterior uh, villagers, the villagers that are far away from enemy town centers first. And, you know, when it comes to early game rushing, your town center is a very powerful deterrent. You want to stay the hell away from that when you were rushing. And you'll notice that he's pulling in here and he's looking for lumber camps, mining camps, things far away from the town center, things he can harass with his early game units. So CJ here, it's great that he's done some scouting. He's taken a look at this base and he'll be able to zone his opponent off of these resources. Now, villagers in the early game are quite strong and they will be able to fight back uh, and do a decent amount of damage, but he's going to run away. And assuming he had more villagers and there's only like two archers here, you know, the reason why Drushing is so effective, Drushing, of course, is going for early game uh, militia, is because you don't need to even need to kill any units, per se. You just need to make sure that your opponent's uh, villagers are idle and they're not gathering any resources, and they might as well be dead. Nightbringer here is going to be smart. He's not going to take that fight, and he's going to send his villagers back to go build a lumber camp somewhere else where it's safe. And he's going to try and wall off this area to create a makeshift choke point and funnel CJ's units into his town center. Because, again, CJ cannot walk through that town center or lose his entire army. This is a very effective rush, but a good response here from Nightbringer. Now, Crystal Saber, the thing here is, is if he was scouting a little bit better, I think he would have noticed that the Delta is just totally not prepared. Delta here is building a watchtower, which I think is smart. He will be able to hold the line. Welcome, Almighty Jack, to the stream. Thank you, man. I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying my content. Glad to have you. You can find my live stream schedule below, and I'd love to see you again, man. So this watchtower is a good choice. Uh, for Delta, as he has to keep this gold. If he loses this hill in this gold mine, he's in, in deep trouble. And, and this Watchtower will be able to uh, protect his villagers and and uh, zone Crystal Saber away. And Crystal Saber can either sit underneath the Watchtower to uh, ignore uh, the Watchtower, because the Watchtower's minimum range can't shoot things directly below it. So this is smart on Crystal Saber's part. However, these villagers trapped in here, so, eh, you know, it's kind of a net neutral. But, it, you know, as soon as these archers move away, uh, they're going to get gunned down by that Watchtower. So the thing here is that if Crystal Saber was scouting a little bit better, he would have noticed that uh, the Delta was on the flank, but he built a barracks extremely late. And that means that Delta is very, very uh, vulnerable uh, to rush, so he could have just been able to like stream out those, those archers, but it was a good decision in his part to do some early aggression, and Crystal Saber up to the cast age right now, uh, which is going to be quite, quite solid. Nightbringer should probably close this area off, but he is already deterred uh, CJ, and CJ has already decided uh, to basically pull out of here. Uh, well, actually, no, never mind. It looks like uh, CJ got shanked by a bunch of these villagers, which is fine. Because uh, Nightbringer does him not numbered. And the Siege Workshop here, good decision on his part. We'll be able to use the Mangonels to take down the archers. Mangonel is very good against the Feudal Age units. I don't usually stream Boobly Games, uh, Cyber Chicken, uh, Dadgum. I mean, I upload the post commentary on my YouTube channel. But, like, uh, I don't normally stream them, but I'm totally down to. 
Oh, uh, okay. Now, Tesserex asks, is it better when you're rushing to build forward military buildings? And the answer is not always. I mean, it's very risky, right? If you have forward military buildings like uh, Savage Genetics does here, and it actually looks like the teams are pretty imba, uh, then, uh, you know, if the rush goes bad, you're, you're basically dead. And we can see, I really recommend watching Game 34, uh, War is Coming Game number 34 on my YouTube channel if you want to know a little bit more about the pros and cons of forwarding and see it really in action. Because, like, if you forward somebody like this, this is a ton of resources and technologies invested here, and if you lose the, uh, you know, if, you, if your rush isn't successful, these buildings are basically useless and you have nothing to defend yourself at home, so it's very, very risky and it depends. The answer is it depends. CJ is in deep trouble here as Savage Genetics putting on a lot of pressure with Eagle Warriors. The correct response here would be actually, believe it or not, Long Swordsmen, Men at Arms, something melee, rather than the Crossmen not amazing against these guys. The Eagle Warriors have pretty high Pierce armor. He should fall back, not take this fight, try and fight under the town center where it's safe. But CJ's in a lot of trouble. He's getting really pressured hard here. And yeah, I noticed that the scores aren't sorted correctly. I see what you mean now. They're not actually in order of, uh... I mean, they're sorted by team, but like, Savage Genetics score is way higher than everyone else's. Um, yeah, Savage Genetics is actually probably going to be able to do a lot of damage here. Crystal Saber, uh, doing some serious pressuring. Uh, Delta has got the right idea here with the Skirmishers, uh, definitely. Skirmishers, the counter here to the Crossmen, uh, but they do cost food, so he has to be careful about that. And without Elite Skirm, uh, they're not going to be amazing against these, uh, these Crossbows. Believe it or not, Crystal Saber can actually take this fight, even though, uh, you know, he has Skirmishers here, because Delta doesn't have Elite Skirms, he doesn't have any defense upgrades, he does not have Vodkin Arrow. Crystal Saber has, uh... Bodkin Arrow, he's got Crossbowmen. These Skirmishers aren't actually that tanky. They will actually lose this fight, and Crystal Saber is waiting till he had the hill advantage, because if you're on a higher elevation than your opponent, you do more damage and take less. 25% for each, I believe. Uh, yeah, he'll be able to take this fight, so good on Crystal Saber to go do that here. The correct response here is actually like Long Swordsman, honestly. As weird as it sounds, you definitely want to go do that. Yeah, I would agree the Black Winds, yes. I was, I, again, I didn't mean to say that uh, earlier, or that's not the way that it was meant to come out, the Black Winds, but I already covered that. I don't want to explain that again. Uh, so in, in this particular situation, as weird as it is, you actually kind of want to make uh, Long Swordsman, <laughs> but uh, not that he has too much of an eco for this. I mean, another good option here would be, of course, to get a Siege Workshop out and make some Mangonels, and I should be able to take care of it. I see that Savage Genetics is just doing some crazy work and just carrying his entire team. He might be a little too good for this specific game, but, you know, people's ratings are all over the place. It can be kind of tricky business. What I like to see, though, is the Alpha uh, Alpha right now, Alpha 141, the blue player, the blue Franks, is, uh, you know, paying attention to the game, and he is sending something to help his teammates, and he's got some blacksmith upgrades, too. Always, always get those. Very, very important. And, you know, again, during this time while you're being pressured, it's always a good idea to work on your eco while you're building a military, but that just takes practice. These town centers will be able to protect Delta's eco, but... He's going to need like a siege workshop to deal with these crossbows. When you're outnumbered militarily, the mangonel is a great, great uh, equalizer in this case. And the mangonel here would be a good idea against these battering rams, as mangonels do have an attack bonus versus siege weapons. But they're really bad against these eagle warriors. And, uh, and Evolve here, aka Savage Genetics, the orange Aztec, uh, is doing really well because he has the plus two defense upgrade for his eagle warriors. And when it comes to melee units, you want to be prioritizing the... Uh, the armor upgrades so that they take less damage from town centers when you're raiding. They're super duper tanky, and, and that's why that was a smart idea. You ironically do more damage if you last longer in this case. And when it comes to range units, you want the range upgrades so that you can get, uh, you know, the first shot off. An army of rams. How quaint. Indeed. So, the good news is here, though, is that Crystal Saber putting on a lot of pressure. Got the skirms coming out from Delta. He's getting a lot of upgrades. His upgrade priority definitely in the right place. And, uh, yeah, he actually should be okay in this case. He has two archer ranges. He should be able to actually uh, deal with Crystal Saber here. As Crystal Saber is going to be under that town center. He's getting shanked by these villagers, surrounded by the skirmishers. So really well played on Delta's part here. However, we're going to need some serious backup for CJ as Alpha is fighting for his life right now. I have no idea why the scores aren't organized correctly. Perhaps it's a bug. <laughs> Indeed, Bla uh, Blasting Blasmer. Your sleep comes first, but thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying the stream. And if you miss out on anything, I always post it on YouTube. Supports appreciated! So yeah, in, in deep trouble here for CJ, his mangonels really aren't going to do anything against these Eagle Warriors. So that's a pretty good shot, but the mangonel has minimum range, so it can't shoot the Eagle Warriors. And he's what he's going to need right now is CJ's going to need some Long Swordsmen. Uh, the Knights, honestly, from Alpha, like, his hurt's in the right place, but Eagle Warriors are okay against Knights. It, obviously, you know, the Knight beats the Eagle Warrior one-on-one -on -one for sure, and even one-on-two, but the Eagle Warriors are cheaper from a food perspective, and the Eagles are actually decent-ish. 
I say decent, they're not like, Eagles are not a counter to Eagle Warriors. The Knights are not a counter to Eagle Warriors. Uh, but Eagle Warriors have a teeny tiny attack bonus versus Cavalry. Teeny tiny, very, very rarely relevant, but one night at a time streaming in here is not going to do diddly squat. Uh, for CJ, unfortunately, so we're gonna need some long swordsmen. Delta did a great job defending over here, so that's pretty good. And, uh, you know, now if we take a look at the rest of the map, I see that Nightbringer here is kind of booming up. He's got a Siege Workshop, which again is the right defense when you're outnumbered by your opponents, unless it's Eagle Warriors or Knights, it's good against the ranged ones. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cinepolito, hopefully I got your name right, man. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's quite late for Europeans, uh, but welcome welcome to the stream, man. I'm really, really glad uh, that you got there, and uh, yeah, this is the last game, but I hope it's a good one for you, man. Uh, and if the game isn't good, hopefully my commentary is good anyway. Glad to have you. I do usually start quite a bit earlier than this, though. You can find the schedule below. So CJ is basically dead here. Savage Genetics way better than his rating appears, unfortunately. Now, I don't think he's actually a smurf. I guess he just doesn't play ranked games. Uh, I don't know. But that's unfortunate here, as he is going to kind of clobber, uh, clobber these guys and kind of end this game before I can talk too much about a lot of these concepts. But yeah, when I'm talking a little bit about uh, what Nightbringer's up to, an interesting concept is he seems to be booming pretty hard. And he can get away with this in this case, and by booming I mean he's focusing really heavy on his, on his economy before he uh, actually gets uh, too much of a military out. He's playing very defensively, right? He's focusing very heavy on getting a full, fully built economy before he builds too much of a military. And normally that's bad on the flank because he doesn't have anything to defend himself, but Savage Genetics, uh, the orange Aztecs player, is doing so much damage it's just basically going to kill CJ and Alpha on his own that uh, is actually correct for Nightbringer to do this since he's not needed at all right now. So he might as well get huge, boom up, and do some serious work. Good night, Martin. Uh, glad to have you. Now, so... And we talk a little bit about uh, whether or not should you use your army now or should you wait for it to mass up? And it's like, it's a tricky, tricky uh, question there. And the answer is usually with most things, it depends. And it'll take a while to get a good feel for it. But in this case, most of the time I would say it's better to send your army in than wait till you have like 40 plus dudes, right? Until you have a perfect army with upgrades. Like, most of the time... You want to send your army in. You know, I can't tell you how many times, you know, you guys have probably experienced this, right? Where your teammates are waiting for the paladins, all the all the upgrades, they want to have them perfect, get their perfect old army, and they're not sending it when you could just use any bit of reinforcements. But in this case, sending them in one at a time is not going to help uh, CJ at all. CJ is completely dead, and these knights are just going to die here. He uh, needs a larger group of them. The knights are just going to die one at a time. So, it's going to take some experience to be able to evaluate whether or not you should just send them in or wait for them to mass up, but there's a happy medium, right? Like, you don't want to send them in one at a time, unless you can send, like, a huge, huge stream of dudes, but, uh, you know, in this case, you probably should have waited to mass them up a little bit, and, you know, it's just going to take some experience. Alpha here is saying he's sorry, but what really matters here uh, is that, you know, he had a good game and he learned a little bit of something. Uh, that, that, this is that's the whole point of this. And CJ here is unfortunately dead too. They both tried their best, but it looks like Savage Genetics was a little bit uh, above the curve here, and these teams were unfortunately rather imbalanced. But I hope that, uh, please do let me know if this is the type of thing you want me to do more of, uh, and, you know, if this commentary was helpful to you in some way. We'll talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, unit choices here. The Light Cavalry, interesting option, but very, very easy to counter. And, you know, in general, Knights are a better option in the Castle Age, unless your opponent's going for Monks, because Knights are just super duper strong. The Light Cavalry rating is decent, but, like, the Byzantines don't get uh, Bloodlines for one, and this is just so much easier to counter with the Spearmen from Delta, so... Perhaps Knights are the better uh, option here from Crystal Saber than Light Cavalry. He's trying to be a little greedy, that's a okay. CJ is completely dead, he's down to 9 pop. Not too much he could have done here. Uh, again, you know... It's weird because we don't usually see elite eagle warriors. We don't usually see them. But uh, long swordsman would have been one of the answers there. Uh, perhaps also like buying a bunch of stone at the market for a castle would have also worked. And I'm really glad that uh, CJ is being so nice to Alpha about this. We never want these guys to feel bad. We were all new. Uh, probably not, Noob Slayer, as I don't really play uh, too seriously anymore. And welcome to stream, uh, Showcox. I, and I mostly play for fun now and to help you guys, because I, you know, it's it's, uh, it's a lot of work and very stressful to try and play this game at a, a serious level, and I don't think it's as entertaining. I don't have that much time in my life to dedicate to this game to play it like super duper, uh, you know, competitively. All right, so Nightbringer pumping out some dudes. That's totally fine and dandy. Uh, notice how these guys have a bunch of extra town centers. Not only are the extra town centers a great way to like protect your villagers, but they also help you get to that goal of 100 plus vills way sooner. And remember, that's the goal, guys. We're shooting for 100 plus villagers because it's a uh, it's a 200 pop game. 
And you're going to need all these vills to be able to constantly produce an army. And, you know, it'll take a while for you to get the feel for how, many, how much villagers you need. But the idea is that you should be able to sustain troop production from a reasonable amount of military buildings. Like, let's say, you know, five-ish stables, right, without running out of cash. And you want to make sure that your resources are allocated in a way that makes sense, right? Like, you don't need a... If you have 20k wood, tribute it to your teammates, right? Or, or reduce the amount of lumberjacks they have a little bit. Yeah, he's probably just saving a little bit of gold, and that's fine. He can be a little greedy in this situation, but in general, knights are the way to go. It looks like, uh, you know, Savage Genetics is going to move out here and just kind of clobber this a little bit. While the ratings did look kind of even in the lobby, uh, some people, you know, they don't play too many uh, rated games, so it can be kind of tricky to balance that. Everyone has their rating for different reasons. You know, I'm more of a closed map uh, fan. I, I play a lot of Arena, Black Forest, but Arabia, not, not so much my thing. That's why I think that the uh, rating system could use a little bit of an overhaul, but you know, that's a topic for another day. Evolve here, again, pushing out. Alpha not really able to defend here. He finally did start massing up his guys, but he is basically down for the count as he does not have enough military. Another thing, if you're really struggling, uh, Desperation Castle is the way to go. Put the castle to protect your con. I, I do really love the uh, spectator dashboard, yes. However, we don't have it in AW2 HD. Now, this castle here is an interesting placement. It's actually on the lower elevation, so uh, this castle can actually be attacked. Uh, and, and these light cavalry here are going to be taking less damage and dealing more to these villagers and the castle if they attack the castle. This castle is actually not in a good position, mostly because there's uh, Delta is going to have a really hard time actually building it. As he doesn't have enough military in to really like build this, he might be able to if uh, Crystal Saber pulls back. Depends if reinforcements are on the way. He hasn't sent them out yet. I would probably have built the castle in a place where he can actually reasonably build it, you know, like over here. So a Desperation Castle could have saved CJ, could have saved Alpha. These guys basically dead. Uh, so, you know, if they want to call a game, that's that's totally A-OK -okay at this point. I don't expect them to really uh, drag this out and fight too much. Another thing I want to cover briefly is, like, thinking ahead. And yeah, I'd love to team up with you in a tournament ready, Teddy. It'd be fun. Is, is, you know, again, thinking ahead. And we look at Crystal Saber right now, uh, you know, and he was stockpiling a lot of food, right, which seemed weird. Uh, but he was thinking about the Imperial Age. He's clicking up right now. And, yeah. You want to have your uh, economy set up so your villagers are organized in a way that makes sense for whatever your game plan is. And, you know, we don't really see the Eagle Warrior rush here because it tends to be overshadowed by knights. But, you know, Savage Genetics was in the pocket position and the Mesoamerican Civs, the Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Incas do not get knights. They don't have horses. So Eagle Warriors are the next best thing. And he didn't go for a crossbowmen or something like that. Or, like, long swords because those guys uh, walk really slowly. They'll never get there in time. And as the pocket, you need to get your, uh, you know, your... A speedy units out there like your cavalry archers if you're like the huns your plumed archers if you're the mayans uh your knights usually you'll see knights from the pocket because yeah they're fast enough that they can get there to go reinforce your flanks at a reasonable hour and they're much stronger than the feudal age units so if you go attack the opposing flank with knights and the opposing flank is in the feudal age because he's trying to deal with the early game rush defend himself or he's rushing himself knights very hard to deal with regular spearmen not so good against that so gg well played I hope that this makes some uh, some sense. Uh, there are a lot of topics that I wanted to cover, but this game didn't last that long. And uh, I appreciate that uh, the uh, this team, uh, Alpha, uh, Delta, and CJ, did not drag this game out uh, too unnecessarily. But at the same time, I think they picked a great time to resign. Like when, when they was actually dead and they did not drag it out. We saw some pretty good uh, combat here between Crystal Saber and Delta. They had some pretty good, uh, pretty good stuff going on. And I like to see the Blacksmith upgrades prioritized correctly. Uh, from most of these players here, and Nightbringer with some pretty pretty sick defense. So yeah, and in general, if you don't know what to do, you can always ask your teammates uh, and see what they say. Uh, keep a good uh, keep a good eye on the map, and make sure that you help your teammates when when needed. A lot of these things will take a lot of practice and experience for you to be able to improve at them, but these concepts are definitely important. And AOE2 is a I think a difficult game to get started in, but eventually these. These things will, these concepts will become clear over time, and, and, and they should make sense. I like to see that people's economies were, you know, generally set up pretty nicely. I mean, Crystal Saber was thinking, you know, he's really heavy on stone, but in general, you know, these guys aren't wasting their time, uh, you know, get, having like a trillion of a resource they didn't really need. I mean, Savage Genetics here, aka Evolve, our orange Aztecs player, super heavy on gold. Why? Because he's thinking ahead. He wants to make Ego Warriors, right? Eagle Warriors cost 50 gold each and 20 food. Very heavy on the gold department. So he knows that he needs a lot of gold, and that's why his eco is set up that way. I saw a lot of good stuff, too, here from these guys, so this looks very promising, as uh, they were really focusing on the villager production a lot throughout the game. And, you know, I look at uh, Alpha's villager counts a little bit low here. It's a little bit low, but, uh, you know, it, he'll get better at that over time. You want to be really thinking about your economy throughout most of these games. If you have a stronger... 
economy uh, than your opponent. Like, if your micro is terrible, you'll still be able to win just because you have more junk. But, yeah, micro is important too, obviously. And CJ's villager count is understandably low as he got pressured really hard. So, yeah, Eagle Warrior is not the best, uh, the best thing uh, in terms of, like, pocket rating. But, like, the Aztecs don't get that many uh, other options. Crossbowmen from the pocket kind of sucks. So, I mean, really, like, you usually see the Aztecs, like, going for the Imperial Age, praying that their, uh, their flanks survive. And then, like, making Elite Eagle Warriors uh, with that huge power spike. The Elite e Eagle Warrior upgrade is a substantial upgrade from the regular Eagle Warrior. Hopefully you'll get to the Imperial Age first because you were booming and not making any military beforehand. And the Aztecs get amass those so very quickly because their military produces 15% faster. You kind of blitzkrieg them. That's what we usually see from Aztecs in the pocket. But Aztecs in the pocket, not that amazing. I'll be doing uh, plenty more streams and I'll have plenty more opportunities to play with you again, Noob Slayer. you find the schedule below, just scroll down a little bit. So yeah, team's not uh, not not perfectly balanced, but that is okay. I, I like to see that uh, Crystal Saber here with a strong, strong eco. And uh, yeah, let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to cover here? Um, yeah, so again, you want to be thinking about your position in the team. If you're in the pocket, you want to be thinking about getting the Castle Age pretty quickly, not generally making any military in the Dark Age or Feudal Age. So you go for like a fast Castle Age generally. And if you're on the flank, you probably want to be thinking about rushing your opponent either in the Dark Age or the Feudal Age. And then... Or, and at least defending against yourself in that case. It takes practice. This is how we learn. I have to say I'm super proud of you guys for being so nice. CJ here was so nice to Alpha. And Alpha, you know, you have a great attitude, man. Uh, I like that you guys comforting each other. No one's mad. This is all a learning experience. And I'm glad that you guys had fun. Hopefully you learned something. I will upload the VOD to YouTube. And yeah, uh, so just keep your eyes peeled. It will show up in your YouTube uh, subscription inbox soon. Hopefully you guys learn a little bit of something. I saw some great promising plays from you guys. And I think you'll all turn out to be great players soon. And I hope you all enjoyed watching this one. Your constructive feedback is appreciated. Let me know if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. If there's any topics you want me to cover in these videos. If this commentary was helpful to you. Even if you don't want to see this again. Blah, 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 blah. Twas a, twas a good game. Twas a good game. And yeah, believe it or not, Long Swordsman actually the, the counter here to Eagle Warriors. Uh, it, it's bizarre how that works out. But yes, Long Swordsman not completely useless. How many hours of gameplay do I have? Noob Slayer wants to know. Oh my god, I've got seven. I have right now. I have uh, one thousand seven hundred and twelve hours in the game. But that, don't even get me started on the original AOE two Voobly and whatnot. I've seen every single replay pre two thousand six in AOC Zone. I'm obsessed with this game. I I, I love it. Uh, the Jolly Canadian. I think AOE two is an amazing game. And, uh, you know, while I don't play it very seriously anymore, I still love to watch the game and give you guys a hand and try and explain concepts to you guys. Because, like, I, again, I had to watch thousands of replays to actually understand this game. Uh, I don't play it enough to apply it to my own gameplay uh, that well. Although I think I am a decent player. But, you know, they're obviously better players. But I want to try and share that knowledge with you guys in a way that's easy to understand. So hopefully I did a good job with that today. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you again, Alpha. You, you did pretty well. Uh, so, Give You Anxiety says, hey, Resonance new to the channel. Welcome, Give You Anxiety. Glad you could show up. He wants to know if I ever play AoE 3, and if not, he's offering me a free AoE 3 CD key. That's extremely generous of you, uh, Give You Anxiety. I really appreciate the offer. I already have the game, though. Uh, I did indeed buy it, so I still have my store-bought copy of the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I got all the expansions, too. Uh, I don't really play it that often. Uh, I think it's a really good game. But it didn't really feel that much like an AoE game to me, and I don't know. I play it sometimes, but it's a really good game, but uh, there are other games that I play uh, generally more than that. I really appreciate the offer, though, and welcome to the stream, dude. I did record that game, yes, uh, and I will be I will be uploading the VODs to YouTube. You played quite well, Savage Genetics. Quite well, yes. That's the idea, Aurelius. That's the plan. That's why I'm here, to save you guys a little bit of time, make concepts easier to understand. Oh, you don't know how happy that makes me. Uh, seriously, like, thank you so much, um, Cinepolito. I really, really appreciate that. Makes all the work I put in worthwhile. Yeah, I think AoE 3 is a pretty snazzy game. Okay, so, hopefully you all enjoyed watching this video. If you did, you know, feel free to leave me a like rating, as it does help me out a lot. It helps a ton with the exposure, and one of the best ways to support my channel, especially if you don't have any cash, is certainly to, uh, you know, just leave a like rating, a comment, whatnot, blah, blah, blah. If you enjoyed watching this video, then you'll probably enjoy watching the rest of the stuff on my YouTube channel. We have plenty of other Age of Empires 2 videos there, as well as videos of other games. So if you like this one, you'll probably like those as well. Had a blast this time. I hope you all had a good game too. And yeah, uh, I'd love to have you at my weekly Twitch TV live stream. You can find uh, a link to that in the video description. You just click uh, on my Twitch page. Scroll down a little bit on my Twitch page. you find the schedule there. For those of you watching live, the schedule is below as well. And yeah, on Sunday, we're going to be continuing... 
Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. So if you haven't been watching that much, then I'd totally recommend that you come by during the next couple of Sundays. I do believe I'm taking the first week of May Sunday off because uh, it's my friend's birthday. And you're going to do a cool little birthday party. You're going to go on a little road trip to go visit him and say hi. Oh, but yeah, we're going to be taking on Elite Four in the 8th Gym Leader Catch in Kyogre. It's going to be nuts. Thank you so much for watching today's stream, guys. I'm going to end off the video right now, uh, but I am going to stick around for like a, like five or so minutes uh, at the end of the live stream and go answer any of your last minute questions. So yeah, if you have any questions or if you want me to say goodbye to you personally, stick around, stick around. We'll be right back and I'll see you all shortly. Thank you so much for watching so far.